you might not expect much when you look at such a little package. But the Atomos can certainly surprise you. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this Mastery Rank 5 Secondary Beam Weapon. I'm gonna be covering a lot of the basics considering the weapon's low mastery lockout and I wanna make sure that anybody watching this video can understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So if you're a veteran of the game and already know most of this stuff, then please, have a little patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Atomos. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped and for that I'm gonna be needing a couple of brave volunteers. First of all, the Atomos is a beam weapon and it will channel a frontal beam. Now that beam has 15 meters worth of range, so basically if I try to hit my targets from here, no go. Coming in closer will guarantee me my hit. Now you will see that the Atomos links to additional targets, it can jump to 3 additional targets, similarly to the Amprax. Now there is no mention of this on the wiki or anywhere else for that matter, but the damage seems to get halved with each and every single jump, so the more targets you link, the more AoE damage, just keep in mind that damage does ramp down. One more thing, the Atomos being a beam weapon, you don't start off at 100% damage as soon as you pull the trigger. It will start off at 20% of the damage, quickly ramp up to 100% of its damage over the course of 0.6 seconds. After you stop firing, it will remain at 100% for 0.8 seconds, after which it will decay back to the original 20% over the course of 2 seconds. Let's have a look at the stats. First of all, mod capacity is 60 out of 60, and if your Atomos only has 30 out of 30, then jump into actions and plug in an Orokian Catalyst. The Orokian Catalyst can be found from alerts, invasions, or, if you're lucky, from the Daily Sortie. Don't have access to the Daily Sortie yet? Simply progress further through the main storyline, and you will. Lastly, you have the option of paying 20 plat for it. My weapon has been formatted a total of 5 times and that might seem excessive but it will pay off in the end, I recommend you guys formatting 5 times. By default the Atomos does come with one polarity, unfortunately it's a Vazarin polarity and there's not a lot of options when it comes to mods such as this, the only good mod is Deep Freeze with this specific polarity. In any case, the accuracy is 12.5, now this is a beam weapon so plus uh, accuracy or minus accuracy effects don't really have that much effect on them. Actually, very little to nothing. Critical chance unfortunately is low at 15% and so is the crit multi at 1.7. This is not where the weapon shines but it will still be worth pumping up the crit chance and the crit multi. Fire rate 8.0, magazine of 70 and reload of 2.0 and this might mislead you, you might think that the Atomos is very ammo efficient. But in actuality, it really is not. Probably the biggest problem with the weapon is the ammo economy. You can fix this one of two ways. You either put on pistol ammo mutation, or a more elegant solution would be to go into companions and select carrier. Now you can use carrier or carrier prime, it doesn't really matter. I only have carrier prime, so I'm gonna be uh, outlining ammo case. Increases ammunition capacity by 25 and converts ammo pickups into ammo for equipped weapons after 2 seconds. Just keep in mind to have the Atomos equipped when you pick up ammo. This is a more elegant way than sacrificing a mod slot for the Atomos, but of course the choice is up to you. Now that we covered that, Riven Disposition 2 out of 5, this is a fairly popular weapon because, well, it really is powerful, so the Rivens will be decent at best. Status chance is 21% and this is actually quite good and we will pump it up further to see what kind of results we get. By default, the Atomos has heat damage, no IPS, so no impact puncture or slash, we do have an element. Now when you're dealing with weapons that already have an element, you gotta think of that element as last in line of combinations. On all weapons, you have a combination priority. Combinations are always 2x2 two two from top left to bottom right. So for that heat, you could think of it as a very very last mod slot. Like you would have heated charge over here. Think of it something like this when you're taking into account elemental combos. In any case, let's start slapping on some mods and Hornet Strike of course is mandatory on any secondary weapon. 220% extra damage. When it comes to damage, let's see, what other options do we get? Well, Augur Pact is a solid choice, but unfortunately I can never really fit this one in any of my builds. There are always better options. Hollow Point, not worth it in the case of the Atomat, and Magnum Force is simply underpowered. This one, fully maxed out, will give you 66% extra damage at the cost of minus 33% accuracy. Like I said earlier, the accuracy isn't an issue, but only 66% extra damage, I mean, come on, Augur Pack gives you more than that, plus you have the benefit of the set. 
So when it comes to damage, that's all we're gonna do. Next, let's go into multi-shot. Probably one of the most important stats on weapons currently. Battle Diffusion and Lethal Torrent will be your two options. Now, before we slap these on, it is important to understand what multi-shot does on weapons. Basically, multi-shot normally means that you're firing multiple projectiles. Not so in the case of beam weapons. As you see here, it didn't increase my shot status chance because, again, I'm not going to be firing two beams. It just increased the damage. Now, initially, I thought that multi-shot simply just adds the percentage amount in damage. However, that is not entirely true it does add damage but it multiplies off the modded damage now if you don't understand what this means basically it adds 120 percent extra damage after hornet strike or other a percentage base damage increases so keep that one in mind for the time being we're also going to be adding lethal torrent with one uh, mention here now the extra 60% multi shot is nice so therefore 60% multiplicative damage the fire rate now the fire rate will lower our kill time significantly so that is more damage but it sure nukes that ammo economy keep that one in mind it might even be worth to think of this weapon like uh, well a bright shining star that will burn out in a couple of seconds while destroying everything and just forget about it after you run out of ammo you know what that can be a viable tactic at the end of the day very well, we got our multi-shot, we got our damage, why don't we go into crit chance and crit damage. If these two multipliers were just a little bit higher, this would have been insanely overpowered. Pistol Gambit will mean 120% crit chance, and if you guys have primed versions of any of the mods that I recommend, then by all means, use your prime versions. For the initial build, we're gonna keep it to standard versions, just so you can understand what you can expect out of the weapon. Of course, crit chance is nothing without crit damage and target cracker will add 60% crit damage. Next, we should be looking towards amplifying our damage with elemental damage, elemental combos. When slapping on elementals to a weapon, you gotta keep in mind where are you going and who are you fighting. For example, if you're going up against Corpus, you can build magnetic. That will deal extra damage to their shields or you can just build toxin. Now, toxin will bypass their shields entirely and deal damage to their health. Up against the infested, well then heat is more than enough to deal with them. Heat which the Atomos already has, so you can just further increase that with something like a heated charge. Today we're gonna be taking the example of the Grenier. These are still the toughest targets in Warframe. Grenier have two armor types, they have Alloy and they have Ferrite. Alloy armor can be found on units such as Bombards and Ferrite can be found on more heavier units such as Heavy Gunner for example. Against Grenier, more often than not, your safest bet is to build Corrosive which is the elemental combination between electricity and uh, toxin. So why don't we do that? We have an option. Should we go for the 90 mods which provide more damage or the 60-60 mods which provide less damage but a good chunk of status chance? Throughout testing, the 60-60 mods have constantly performed better, but I will have to make a mention here a bit later. We're going to be using Jolt. Now that is 60% electricity and 60% status chance unfortunately for us jolt is not farmable this one can only be obtained from battle kit here the void trader or the trade jet currently on pc going for about 40 50 plat if you don't have jolt or can't spare the plat then simply use convulsion instead of it it's gonna be fine the difference in uh, setups will be minimal so don't worry about it too much but for the ideal setup yes jolt we got our electricity so let's go into toxin with pistol pestilence now this one is a lot more affordable 60% Toxin and 60% Status Chance, Pistol Pestilence drops from Corrupted Vore in the Void and to be honest is very easy to farm, if not 15 plat from the Trade Chat. Very well, we almost got a full setup, last slot is what I like to call an option slot and if you guys wanna, you don't wanna use Carrier for example because you wanna use a different Sentinel then Pistol Ammo Mutation is going to be the way to go and this will fix your, uh, your all your ammo issues. Now, there is a mod which I want to point out. One of the problems of the Atomos is that range. It, you, it only has 15 meters. You can further increase that with Ruinous Extension. 8 range. 8 meters, that's what they mean. Now, keep in mind that this range will only apply to the main beam. The arc range is only 7 meters, okay? The jumping from target to target part. That will not get increased. But the range of the main beam will get increased from 15 to 23 so this one is definitely a smart option since we're talking smart options why don't we talk about punch through seeker once again is a valid option basically if you put on seeker 
and your beam goes through two targets, let's say, then each of those targets can jump, uh, the beam that's hitting those targets can jump to three additional targets. Therefore, more AoE. Definitely, Seeker is a smart choice. However, if you're gonna go that route, then I recommend you use Ruinous Extension for the range together with Seeker, because again, that 15 meter range will turn around to kind of bite you in the butt. But if you want the best solution in terms of damage, then you simply increase your uh, elemental combo. In my case, it's corrosive, so I'm gonna need more electricity or more toxin. Either of the two, it doesn't really matter which, so I'm gonna be slapping on pathogen rounds, and my corrosive jumps to 541. We're gonna be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Gunner level 120, and let's see what the Atomos can do to these guys. Considering the low mastery lockout on this weapon, honestly, I wasn't expecting much, but after the Sionid Gamma Core and what it showed me it can do, I am not surprised. This is absolutely fantastic. It simply burns through targets. However, there is a small issue outside of the ammo, of course. You will see that some of these targets have their armor completely removed, like, for example, this one. What happens when the armor is completely gone and their health bars turns red? Well, in case of my build, that means that my 75% extra damage versus corrosive armor disappears. But what is left is clone flesh, so my fire damage will have 25% extra damage. So it might be a smart idea to simply drop one of the 60-60 mods and put on a 90 mod. The option is up to you. The reason why these guys got their armor fully removed is because they got hit by the chain, okay? The arcing beam of the Atomos. They got more shots onto them but at lower damage. So they didn't die, they simply got their armor removed. So keep that one in mind, it's gonna be preference based and of course depending on your situation. You can simply drop Jolt altogether and just slap on Convulsion. That will reduce the amount of overstrip you can do. And this is gonna be the base build I'm recommending to you guys. Now let's switch to a Revan setup. Now I got free Revans for this one. Thank you very much my wonderful community. You guys are freaking awesome. They gave me like free Revans for the Atomos and this one so far is the best I got. Crit chance, damage and minus weapon recoil. Initially I was super glad when I saw like oh minus weapon recoil but that's actually a positive stat. In any case, not necessarily the most ideal Riven for the Atomos, but again we're talking Dispo 2. Other than that, the build is pretty much the same. I simply swapped in Prime Target Cracker and Prime Pistol Gambit instead of the normal versions and I kept my two 60-60 mods. I got rid of, uh, whatchamacallit, Lethal Torrent simply because I had too many ammo issues with it. So I lowered that down a little bit. Now let's see what kind of a difference will we get with a decent Riven and of course we're gonna be shooting the exact same targets. The Atomos from my point of view is a fantastic weapon. Currently beam weapons are excessively strong, from my point of view at least. I'm not calling for a nerf, definitely not, I like my fun just as much as you guys do. And the Atomos in essence is a mini Amprax, it simply functions almost identically to its big brother. So if you guys wanna main the Amprax, then you can have the Atomos as a secondary weapon. As you saw, I burned through those guys with no problem at all, so it's definitely worth going for the Atomos. Two main issues, once again, the ammo economy and the range, but both of those can be fixed. Now, before I go, of course, we're gonna be picking up Lady Mirage Prime and pop up, pump up our damage even further through the use of Warframe buffs. First of all, the aura. You can use pistol amp. 27% extra damage to pistols. This is an aura, so all of your party members will be receiving this benefit and you can stack it as well. One note though, if you know you're going up against Grenier, then something like corrosive projection is guaranteed to give you better results, but pistol lamp will grant you its benefit regardless of the target you're shooting. When it comes to arcanes, the best one you can have is called arcane precision. This one drops from the third eidolon down on Cetus. On headshot, 80% chance for plus 120 damage to pistols for 8 seconds and the usual plus 1 arcane revive. As for our second arcane, I'm gonna be recommending arcane awakening. On reload, 40% chance for plus 100 damage to pistols for 16 seconds. The problem with arcane awakening is that it's not entirely reliable. You have one more option, arcane velocity. On critical hit, 60% chance for 80% fire rate to pistols for 6 seconds. Now the fire rate will mean that our kill time, so therefore our DPS will go through the roof, but the problem is ammo. You're gonna be bumping into ammo issues, even with carrier. Only with both carrier and ammo mutation uh, will you not have any issues if you choose to run high attack rate mods or arcane. So I don't recommend it, not really. 
Very well, we got Mirage. Let's respawn these guys and see if we can absolutely annihilate them. Activate her clones and of course her third ability which will give us 514% extra damage. And oh my god, are you kidding me? This is a joke. Seriously, this is a joke. I know MR15, well 14, 15 weapons that cannot do that. And when I say 15, I mean the Acolex Prime. That is truly glorious. This is a fantastic weapon, one you should definitely have in your arsenal. You know what you could do? You can forget about ammo altogether and just increase the attack rate, definitely increase the rate of fire and just make it burn bright for a couple of seconds, take out everything in the room and then just simply switch to your primary weapon while you get some more ammo. I highly recommend the Atomos. Yes, it does have some limitations, but that doesn't mean it's not an outstanding weapon. Thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, if you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review then by all means leave it in the comment section down below. I can't realistically promise you that it will be done by next time but I will be reading through each and every comment. But until next time guys, bye bye.